and one thing I've learned too with one of the executives, uh, with one of the companies here, our community, you know, he strived for success. He had a lot of opportunities. He was really made a name for himself mm -hmm. in the business community. And I remember him sharing something that was really profound. He said, I spent most of my career, 55 years trying to be successful. And he, what I realized is I wanted to be significant. Mm. And so success wasn't in the idea of having a big name, a big business, but he realized that his life could matter just be being significant of putting people first. Mm -hmm. And that really impacted me as well of some of the greatest things that we can do is just impact those around us. And yeah. that's whether it's at the grocery store or on the baseball field or mm -hmm. wherever we're at in life. Um, there's just so much pressure on our culture in America to, to be successful and yeah. what that looks like. And yeah. we miss the, the real valuable things of people. <clears throat> yeah, that's a great segue into the name of the podcast. I just wanted to talk about that and get your get your perspective on it. Um, so it is called A Name for Yourself. And ironically, that does come from uh, Genesis chapter 11. So it, the, the, these all the nations are in one place on the earth, and they build this Tower of Babel. And uh, one of the things that they say is, let's make this so we can make a name for ourselves. Um, and it doesn't say that that God had a problem with them saying that, yeah. um, but that's really all they say. And God had a problem with what they were doing. And so, you know, you kind of know what happens from there. Um, but my question is, as a pastor, but also as someone that dreams big, uh, how do we balance that? Um, you know, I want to I want to work for the kingdom. I want to put my hand to noble things. Um, I sometimes can't help the fact that I just have big visions, you know, it, but I don't want to get caught in, in doing it for the wrong reasons. How does a person kind of navigate their own heart in those ways? Yeah, that's a really good question, Max. And I really am excited about what you're doing here. And I think it's going to help a lot of people hopefully just get a greater framework of <clears throat> a life of purpose and of value. <clears throat> and a lot of it is coming down to why do we exist? Why am I here? And what am I living for? Like personally, I have my own per personal mission statement. Mm -hmm. So it helps me uh, clarify um, what I do and what I don't do and how I make decisions and then personal values. Uh, so I think that is one way that helps kind of frame some of that up. So I think it is a challenge of having vision, being a leader. Uh, I remember Zig Ziglar's book, See at the Top, uh, when you open up the cover, mm -hmm. one of the first things it says, you make what's important to them, they'll make what's important to you. And, and I think it's really important as a leader that we, uh, some leaders may look at people and say, what can I get them to do for me? But a true servant leader says, what do I have that helps more people? So I'm always <clears throat> trying to look at individuals like, what do I have resources, positions, abilities? Thank you, sir. Yes. What do I have that other people need yeah. that I can help them be successful? Like if I sit down with someone like yourself, mm -hmm. like I want to know what your dreams are. What are your goals? What yeah. are your ambitions? And I believe God is a creative God. I mean, look at his creation. Mm -hmm. Romans 1, it talks about that. And I think that's that's an aspect of a man that he put of you know, being creative and to conquer and to build. And I think in our culture, sometimes we really squash that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and obviously we know it's sometimes used for the wrong purposes to build yeah. something for themselves. But I do feel like there's something in us about when we put our trust in the Lord, He gives us the desires of our heart. And it's His pleasure of a father to fulfill things that He puts in our heart. Mm. And so I think He gives us dreams and desires. And what I've found is fun to dream bigger because then when God fulfills it, it's like, but God, like only God could do that. Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think there's a, an advantage of dreaming big. If the big. If the dream's too big, it's just an echo. That's a problem. Yeah. Uh, but I do think there's a part that God has given us in the kingdom mindset of doing things that are beyond our own ability mm -hmm. that causes us to have to trust in him. So I look at people not as an opportunity to get them to do what I want or mm -hmm. how to build what I'm trying to build, but what do I have to help build people? Every business we're in is a people business. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all about relationships. And I'm, I love people. I love to see and create spaces for people to connect. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I don't know if that answered your complete yeah, no, question. I, but I, do, I think it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I think what I heard in that is um, 
one of the ways that you might know you're on the wrong, the right track is if you're guided by more of a selflessness than a selfishness. I mean, if you really have a desire to build your own thing and see all these benefits happen, you just might be on the wrong track and um, you might just end up spinning your wheels a lot, get really frustrated. But if you're kind of on the track of, you know, what can, what can we do? What can I help other people accomplish that in turn, you know, builds this, this vision that I feel like is growing in a mind. Well, I think, and again, things come back to the kingdom. Mm-hmm. And that's why the kingdom of God is so different than the kingdom of the world, that God wants a relationship with us, so therefore he sent his one and only son to die for us. He gave his one and only son. So the kingdom of God is really built on its premises that if you want more of something, you got to give what you have. Mm. So it's really the kingdom principle and the world's principle. If you want more of something, yeah. you got to take it. you got to demand it. you got to... To, to go after it. Yeah. It's like Malachi 3.10. It says, test me and see. Give of your first fruits, mm-hmm. and I'll open windows of heaven and pour out blessings that you'd not be able to hold on to. So if you want more money, you really need to give what you have. Sure. And for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. Like you realize everything we have is the Lord's anyway, and if we can't live off 90, you're not going to be able to live off 100. Yeah. Um, so I think the idea of building things or building a name for yourself really is the why. Why do I exist? And it's not building things but building people Mm -hmm. uh, and really taking what you have and giving it it's kind of like in a marriage Uh, to have a great marriage you got to give of yourself you got to lay down your life you know Ephesians 5 that we as husbands we submit to one another out of reverence to what Christ did on the cross and to really lay down our lives for our wives Mm -hmm. and it doesn't make sense for the world yeah 